Well, then, sorry about the break. Uh, the phone battery ran down, so we have to continue from where we stopped. So, and you can ask questions. So, wait, I'm coming. So, in summary, okay, ask a question. No, the doctor's on ladies. I remember. Now, um, in summary, what we've said so far is banks, central banks have the power to create money, and to create, they can create loans or debt, and this debt that they create, what's what called quantitative easing, is digital. And their major reason for creating this quantitative easing is to back up industries or companies or corporations or even individuals that are too big to fail. So there is how big you become that it is the central bank's responsibility to ensure you don't fail. So rather than fail, they give you a QE. Now we are, talk we are trying to take an example of um, why this QE is not the best for an economy. So let's take, for instance, I was trying to use Akara, but we realized Akara may not be the best example. Let's say, for example, I am, uh, okay, let me use the Akara team. So let's say I am an Akara merchant, and I sell Akara to other people that collect to go and hawk. And those guys that hawk, we come back and remit to me my part, why they get their part, pay their taxes and all. Now, let's say, as a company, my worth is a thousand naira. But for some reason, for some reasons, maybe my stove is, uh, is not working well, my beans is not being seen well, and the business is like, looking like it will fail. Now, if what I need to save my Akara business of 1,000 Naira is 10,000 Naira, what CB, uh, the central bank will do through quantitative easing is to float that 10,000 Naira into my business. Now, by floating that 10,000 Naira, it means that, digitally speaking, I am now worth 11,000 Naira. But, value-wise, I am still worth 1,000 Naira. Now, the issue is, when the government gives you a QE, they are only a part of your... Um, they either come in the form of buying stocks, bonds, and the like. Now, by offering you that financial security, they have increased your worth digitally. But in reality, your value has not increased. And the issue is, when we want to judge the economy, we will also look at your digital record to say, ah, Samson's Akara Limited is now worth 11,000 Naira. But in reality, it is not. So, quantitative easing brings about re, um, fake, uh, what's the word I use? I said, there's a way I really like to coin it. I say they create fake, um, they create uh, a stock, they create a big stock exchange market that is not equivalent to the real economy. So when you look at the stock, that was why there was a time, I think a while back, some of us may remember, where they said they did our, what is it called, the evaluation as a country, they were like, ah, our GDP is high. And people kept asking, ah, how can they say we are richer than some countries? Yet, <laughs> for you to afford things in those countries is cheaper than us. That is because we have so much QE that when you look at us digitally, we are worth much more. But in the real economy, we are not. I hope that makes sense. And because this QE is used for big corporations, big companies, and all of that, it means that at the end of the day, the rich man gets richer, the poor man gets poorer, and the gap between them gets wider. And also mathematics. Awesome mathematics. So, in summary, CBN cannot save money. CBN or central banks cannot save money. Central banks cannot go bankrupt. Central bank can create infinite money and buy bonds. Then, the bond they can exchange for money or promise of the government that the government will pay back. And of course, citizens pay back via tax and inflation. Via tax and inflation. Now, the question then is, what is the solution to all of this?
how do we solve all of these issues? Because as a country, the question then is, uh, right now, are we economically stable? No. Remember I said, I will draw all of this back into agriculture so we see how it meets. Now, the first solution which the government has been using here and here is to print more money. Now, printing more money is supposed to be a band aid. Band aid, I hope I pronounce that way, band aid, band aid. It's supposed to be a band aid that is meant to be a short term gain with a long term pain. But it should not be something we do excessively. Now, what then can we do to ensure that um, real wealth can be generated? Because somebody said you can print money, but you cannot print wealth. What can we do to ensure that real wealth can be generated? It is to create depth facility for industries that are into pure manufacturing. Industries that are able to create wealth out of almost nothing. Now, this is where agriculture comes to play. Because you need to understand why is it that we have a government in place that has been shouting, agri, agri, agri. Think about it. You plant a seed of maize and you get a whole crop. If we look at the value of a seed of maize, it is probably, okay, let me use lettuce for example. The price of a single lettuce or tomato seed in some cases like 8 naira. And that tomato fruit, or let's say if you take like 4 seeds together, or let's say for 10 seeds together, 8 times 10 is what? 80 naira. Now, when those seeds become full, so when one single seed becomes a full tomato plant, that seed can give you about 1 or 2 kg. So, an 8 naira seed theoretically can give you a produce worth 800 naira. Happy? Now, interpretation, it is like, when we go back to where we started, it is like government using 3 cents to print a $10 bill. So, agriculture is that tool, one of the tools, that we can use to print money. By putting down 8 naira plus whatever cost for fertilizer and all to generate 800 naira. Would that make sense? Now, we need to understand this because if the government is able, now, if you see an investor that is able to understand using 8 naira to generate 800 naira, the government, we have many a government invest in agriculture because now they understand we can tax that 800 naira and get back even if it is 100 naira from that 800 naira and we are fine because so let's take for example the government gave out a loan of 1000 naira and this 1000 naira is able to generate remember that we said this debt given by government or by banks is a digital currency so the bank has given a digital currency of a thousand naira and they are able to generate, let's say, a 100% increase. So 1,000 Naira plus 0, 0 becomes 10,000 Naira in the form of produce sold. Now, from this produce that this man has generated as revenue, we can decide, let's say they decide to tax 10%. That is how much? 1,000 Naira. Minus the fact that you are going to pay back your debts. Because it's a loan. So, theoretically, government can give 1,000 Naira to agri, get back the debt of 1,000 Naira, get a tax return of 1,000 Naira, get the profit of this 1,000 Naira of loan. So, as a farmer, it's important that we understand the role that we play in the economy. Because Amongst the various sectors we have in the country now in Nigeria, now I can say Nigeria, agriculture still remains the fastest multiplier effect right now. And now somebody is saying, what of oil? Yes, oil did. But people are already developing uh, flying cars that doesn't use petrol. It means our oil has a timeline. It may no longer bear the same value that it bought before. But 
for now, I have not heard of a machine that downloads food. That you just go and do pom pom pom, I need rice, and you have to rice falls from heaven, not yet. So, agriculture remains one of the major areas that we can multiply wealth. Now, if you are going to use agriculture to multiply wealth, you need to know which part of agri is the fastest money doubler. Not every crop. Go back, if you are just joining us on this class, go back to the class where I discussed the 12 forms of value. Look at the class where I discussed the 12 forms of value that you can create in agriculture. Take note that I said something in that class that not every produce provides money. There are products that are for food security. There are food produce that are for money generation. I hope that makes sense. So, it is important that we understand this. Because remember, our next class is supposed to go on sales. But before we discuss sales, you need to understand what money is. Now, somebody is thinking, why am I super uh, concerned about us understanding what money is? Now, as a nation, we are gradually moving from we are gradually moving from because right now people be shouting inflation, inflate, inflation, inflate. We have moved gradually or moving from inflation as a country to stagflation. We have moved already moving already from inflation to stagflation. Now, what is stagflation? Stagflation is a point where our economic growth is very slow and unemployment keeps increasing so where stagflation is you have economic growth at a slow rate why the economy is growing slow or uh, the unemployment is growing very very fast very very fast now, we need to start thinking as farmers, how do we shade ourselves from this? How do we save ourselves from this or shield, shield ourselves from this reality that is creeping in? This may sound controversial, but it's a class you need to know. Number one is, as farmers, as a farmer or as farmers having cooperative and all of that, we should start looking at a point where we create our own currency. That sounds crazy. Because I'm thinking, is this guy seeing? Is this guy normal? Where we create our own currency. Now, that currency is what people we use to buy from us as farmers. So that we are able to use our own currency as farmers to, uh, what's the word now? We are able to back our currency as farmers with the value that we create. I don't know how to explain that. Uh, I'm trying not to use too many real life examples. Like trade by butter. Like trade by butter, but you buy at our, our money at our price to buy our produce at our money's price. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So let me look for an example. Uh, I don't, how much is garina or rice? Uh, container? Uh, rice is seven, six fifty seven for Congo. Congo. Okay. Now, a Congo of rice. For those of us that will watch it in the future, so you not say we are lying. We did this video twenty twenty one, September twenty twenty one. So, a Congo of rice is about seven hundred naira now. I want to explain the meaning of what I say, create our own currency. Question. How much was it before, like last year or two years ago? Any idea? Yeah, like last year. 300. 300. 300. Good. I have people in, see, that's why I said this one is like 300 before. Now, did the number of seeds of rice change when it became 700? No. It is still the same number of rice seeds. Abby? Yes. Now, but 
the money that people need to pay for it increased. And the factors that brought about this increase is not within the farmer's control. Am I making any sense? Yes. Which means uh, the valuation of our product as farmers or our service as farmers is controlled by a part of the economy we have no power over. Meaning, we live at the mercy of other parts of the economy. Does that make any sense? Yes. And as a business, this is not um, this is risky. Because I know you always hear people say things like, banks say things like, ah, farming is a risky business. Farming is a risky business. When they say farming is a risky business, they say it is risky, not because of earthquake. No. Those are the primary risks that can be dealt with. They say it is a risky business because the valuation of what you need the money for is not determined by you. Are we still together? Yes. If, for example, I take money as a loan and I go and build a house somewhere that is fine, if by tomorrow, price of things change, all I need to do as the landlord of the house, what will I do to my rent? I increase it. Now, remember, I borrowed the money maybe as 2 million naira. Maybe in the year 2010. In 2021, when I am renting out the house, how will I rent out the house? Is it based on what the value was in 20... No. Is it based on today's value? What if I borrowed money to start a farm two years ago? I mean, now, price of things have changed in the market. Can I go to the bank and say, you know, then I borrowed the one million to buy fertilizer. Now, they say fertilizer is now, this money now can only, uh, for me to get the same amount of fertilizer, I need five million. Will the bank be willing to say, ah, in that case, eh, since uh, the value of the money has dropped by five, what you should pay back should be by, divided by five. Is that what the bank will say? No. So, it means the valuation of my process is not on me. But, if we create our own currency that we pack up on our own, we are able to control our own microeconomy in the large macroeconomy. Is it confusing? Uh, I'm trying to look for ways to explain this. We can know so much, of course, this is the first time we are having an econ a class on economics like this. Let's see. Um, okay. One other way, now, as a farmer, I advise people this. When you start making money as a farmer, now these are things I cannot put online, but this is for you to know. There are things you can buy to back up your business. One of such things that you can buy to back up your business is gold. Now you realize that... Um, even in the U.S., before now, it was President Nixon that stopped that law. Before now, the U.S. economy was backed up with gold. So, for every dollar that they had, there was a gold that backed it up. The reason is, remember we said, economies can print money, if need be. But you cannot just wake up and print gold. Never making any sense. Yes. Now, Gold is a way to hold up your money in a way that whatever happens in the economy, the gold value does not depreciate. Instead, it appreciates. Now, if I have a gold bar, and they say this gold bar is worth so and so amount, I can take down my gold bar to, let's say Modupe is from uh, Thailand. I can take my gold bar to Thailand. That I am in Thailand, Thailand does not change the value of the gold. Instead, the value of the gold remains the same. It will not only be interpreted in the currency of Thailand. So, in Thailand, that my gold may be worth 10 million Thailand money. In Nigeria, that gold may be worth 10 billion Nigerian money. In the US, it may be worth... 100,000 US dollars. Because 
the value of gold is not affected or pushed to and fro by the economies and policies. Now, if we are able to own our own currency, we will be able to control our own microeconomy in the agri sector. So that whatever happens at the top does not affect us at the bottom. But for this to work, a lot of farmers need to sign on board so that the masses do not have an option but to accept your option. That is option one. Option two, what someone is thinking, what of me that I'm just a single company and before this one will happen, plenty, plenty farmer has to come together. Then you can create your own currency by creating a subscription-based selling. So take for instance, on this Telegram group, you are subscribed. Now, we have told you what the amount is and you agreed and you subscribed. Once it is month end and you do not pay, there is no negotiation, I repeat. We just kick out the person from the group. That's the end. It's that simple. Why? We have created our own microeconomy and we have told you what the currency is. Now, uh, we have some people that have called, they will reach out to me and be like, oh, what does right now we are working on our domiciliary account? What if we want to pay in dollars? Can we pay? Once our domiciliary accounts are active, yes, you can pay. Now, once our domiciliary accounts are active, in our next round of our work and learn, let people start knowing, we are not going to charge people anymore in Naira. We will tell everybody to pay in tea. Can you be say pay $10? $10? Oh. <laughs> Go and find out to buy your dollar, change it and pay. I hope this makes sense. Yes. So, one way to ensure that this money, you are able to use it to your advantage because now you understand how money works is you must learn now how to create your own rules for money so that you can multiply it. Number two is, again, remember this is Telegram class, I won't say this online. You can put your money in cryptocurrencies. It works. I am not advising you to do crypto, do it at your own peril. <laughs> but you can put your money in crypto. So, I know a couple of friends in agri sector that want to create an agri coin. So that's the name they call it, agri coin or food coin, something like that. Yeah. So that when you want to buy from their farm, you pay in crypto. Ooh. What has posted it is the um, CPM wanted to do their own digital currency. We want to see how it will run so that we can do something that aligns with what they want to do. Now, that way you are able to control that economy. See, the key is print money. Print money. Number three is trade in Forex. Trade in Forex, if you can. Forex is just foreign exchange. Trade in Forex, exchanging money and all of that, blah, blah, blah. Number four is exports. Again, you will not see me say this online. Exports. Now, Nigeria's money and every currency in the world is backed up by U.S. money. Every money is backed up by U.S. Uh, dollars. That is why the standard for anything on earth is with dollars. Through their Federal Reserve. Now, the best thing that you can do to ensure that when people are shouting, ah, there is a casting down. For you to be able to say there is a lifting up is think of where can you export your service or product to so that you are paid in that currency. So let's say, for example, you are doing oki, pap, or you are selling tomato, pepper. Right now, for some of us that don't know, we are starting a massive habanero pepper project. If you are interested, we can send you the video to explain the process. Why are we doing that massively? We want to take it to the U.S. to sell. Now, by the time we start selling by February, March, April next year, and people are shouting, ah, for some reason, one dollar is not equivalent to one thousand naira. When they are shouting, there is a casting down. I will not be shouting. Because when one dollar is not equivalent to one thousand naira, 
and the person buying my paper is paying me in dollars, automatically, I cannot be angry. Where people are willing, I'll be sharing testimony. Yes, that, ah, you will not believe I invested when it was 600 to a dollar. <laughs> I'll not be telling them, calm down, believe there is hope. But we understand. Yes, so, the reason I took time to discuss all of this, because as we go into sales in our next class, I want us to look way beyond the horizon of just 10 naira, 20 naira, 50 naira gathered. How do you make real money? How do you collaborate with others to build a conglomerate? Because remember, QE is meant for bailing out big organizations. Organizations that are too big to fail is what QE is meant for. How can you take advantage of debt from banks to make yourself a conglomerate? How can we take advantage of the exchange market? Yes, it is good to sell to people in Okomolero, in uh, Kafanchan. It is good to sell to them, but it is better to earn in a higher currency compared to where you are selling. That is the point. I hope we understand. You are selling something, you are making 50 naira, 100 naira, 200 naira profit. It is good, but it is better you are making 2 million naira profit per sales. How many 200 naira will you combine to become a billionaire? I am not now. I hope we understand. So, do we have any questions? Yes, sir. So, this sorry, solution that you prefer now, and not for individual finance, you have to come together. So that is why there is a need for us. No, there are there is a part that are individual farmers, like the subscription base. Okay. That one can work as an individual farmer. You can find a way to have a currency created that people pay you in. A currency, so let me give an example. Um, let me give an example. So for people that will be interested in working with our pepper value, our pepper, Avanero pepper production, they are going to be investing like 12M, I mean, and they are getting back 16M. That's about 4 million era profit. We are also making 4 million era profit. Now, what we have created is a currency, not a cash, not physical cash. That is why I took time to explain in all of this story that the total currency in circulation is about 8% of the money that is actually available. There is more money digitally than... Uh, if we take time, uh, this is just something for fun that you can do. Something for fun that you can do just to be happy that you need it. So you understand what I'm saying? When you have time, Google World Debt Clock. <laughs> World Debt Clock. Now, World Debt Clock is a clock, is a real-time clock that shows how much every country is owing. They say we are owing over a hundred quadri quadrillion dollars. When you add everybody's debt, who will they owe? No worry, we are owing. <laughs> now, how did I get you? What was that talking about before I go here? What was your question? Now, good, thank you, Jerry. Now, using the Habanero project, what we have been able to do is we will take your money, 12 million naira, use it to do production. Abi? Yes. Was it our money? No. It is your money. From your money, we are able to sell to another person who pays us a total of 20 million naira. That 20 million naira, you get 16 million, we get 4M. How much did we spend? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so we are, just, I'm trying to teach you how to operate like a bank. All we exchange is value. value. We told you the value. We have gotten the person that needs the habanero pepper. We know you need more money. So bring your money. Let's put it to work. 
using agriculture as a tool. That is why I always say, remember that agriculture is a tool. So using agriculture as a tool, we put the money in the ground, in quotes, get products, we sell, we've generated profits, you get your capital, get your 4M profit, we get our 4M out. Does that make any sense? So for this first phase, remember what I said, see this is me being very practical to you in this class. Remember what I said that the, the vision for every farmer is build yourself to become a conglomerate. Why am I doing a 100 hectare habanero pepper project? Because by the time we are done with the 100 hectare in another two years, we should have made a, we should have generated a total profit of, um, let me do the math. We generate 20 million times 100 is what? Mm -hmm. 2 billion. Now, a farm that is able to generate 2 billion in revenue, by the time I take my uh, balance sheet to the government, they will see us as a company worth working with. Yeah. So, they can give us at that point debt. We are not qualified for QE yet. They can give us a debt of maybe about two billion to run the same process. That could now result in money in another four, five, or six years from now. And that six years plus two years, about eight years from now, we are generating probably 50, 60, 70, 80 billion naira, depending on how bad naira has been decided to become at that point. How now, we pray for naira to be the as we were saying. By the time we get about 1800 billion, we go back again for another debt. So we are able to generate maybe four, five hundred billion. At that point, we are not going to go back for debt. We can ask for QE. Shouldn't be shouldn't that be when you are failing? So I don't need to fail to ask for QE. Because I can tell them to be partners to expand because what we want to change is give QE to companies that are succeeding to expand rather than give QE to companies that are dying to pick up because when a company that is dying gets QE it comes back to what it used to be when a company that is alive collects QE it can do more, do better they don't let this part go as this is internal discussion now. Mm -hmm. The project is for many years. Which one? The one you were talking about. The Abanero Pepe. Don't worry, we'll give you the video to watch. Okay, while doing this, we are a, we are a group of people, we are a group of farmers doing it together. No, I am the farmer doing it for people. For the Abanero Pepe project. Yes, you know you, you prefer the solu you prefer solution. No, there are see there are two solutions. There is create our own currency. Yes. Now that is something I cannot do alone. We have to be plenty farmers to do that. So since I cannot do that alone, I went for the next best thing. Okay. Which is create value for people on a value chain that now we have gotten the contract signed of the person that needs the value. Now I need to get the people that will be willing to fund the value. Then I will put in my work to ensure the value comes out. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. That's why I tell people, money is not what's the problem. It is, I, I, what's the word? Idea, your ability to think. So now as a think tank, I know so how do I explain this so that it will make sense to the end? We have, um, what's their name? We have, um, what's the name? The community of Poland. We have the Ministry of Agriculture of uh, uh, Poland and two other countries willing to uptake a banero pepper from us, signed. That is one part. But do I have the banero pepper? No. no. That is another part. Now. But if we get the habanero pepper, I need to get somebody that will transport it. I need to get somebody that will package it. Abi? So there is a company that has already agreed they will do the packaging. 
We could. We have partnered with another company who will be responsible for flying the part the goods. Take note, how much have we spent in all this process? Nothing yet. Nothing yet, like that. But we need money for the production. So, people who have land and have money, bring your land, bring your money, we will do the farming. Hmm. When we are done doing the farming, we will take the produce, give it to those that we package. Of course, the man packaging will get his own money for packaging. When he's done packaging, he will hand it over to the transporters. The transporters takes it to Poland, Ontario, and all of that. Once it lands in those countries, we get paid in dollars. Does that make sense? Yes. As we are getting paid, now hold up. So, from harvest to transport must be within 24 hours. Okay. So, transport within Nigeria will be handled by Ekotutu. They have the coat truck, they have the coat chain transport, they take it. They make their money also. That's why they came yesterday. Good, that's why they were here yesterday. Mm -hmm. This year the thing is flowing. Mm -hmm. Now, since they have their transport, they have moved it. By the time they, they, have, they pay us our money, we now sit down on the chair and pay everybody in the value chain and make our own money. Okay. You also mentioned the fact that if you have land and you don't have money. Now, for those that have land and don't have money, some of these governments are willing to fund the process if people have land. So we will buy it cheaper from them. 15 naira per kilo. Look at our money. Look at our, it's their money, Shabbos. Well, that, would they be the ones to manage it? Because the management is still, it's still us. Well, so you have to now, can I just No, it must be one hectare, hectare minimum. At least. Uh, one, one hectare. Minimum. One hectare, that's it. Let's not deviate too much from what we are saying. <laughs> what we are saying is, is your ability it. to create money. But the What's money that, that you create must be an exchange for value. The money that you create must be an exchange for value. And that don't try to defraud people by creating value that does not exist. Don't be the one that wants to sell airports that does not exist to somebody. No. Create real value. Because remember, why did I take time to discuss this whole economics of money? Remember that debt becomes profitable to the economy and helps the common man when there is a produce or a service to exchange a real value to exchange because at the end when there is real value to exchange everybody wins but when there is no real value to exchange everybody loses everybody loses especially our unborn generation because the debt that we create our unborn generations inherit so I would wait for us to drop our questions on the group because I know that this is a bit long, a bit technical, and that is why I had to use a bit of an audience for this class because it is a bit tricky to understand. So that as you create your business around making money, you need to know and think deep. How do I make money? How do I make money? Thank you. So our next class, we will now go into sales.